Hello, hello, hello. It's a really good weather today, so I will go for a walk. And we can talk about a topic that uh, normally is not so highlighted in the, the Camino videos. Let's go. What is the best way to start a day? With a kiss. <laughs> I have just woken up. <laughs> but it's an important day today. It's Vasaloppet, a cross-country ski race in Sweden. It's a 90 km long and it's named after one of our kings, Gustav Vasa. <clears throat> Gustav Vasa, our king, went on skis from Mura up to Salen. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> and yes, Camilla is also here. Look. <laughs> but uh, Vasalop's day is very important here in Sweden. <laughs> I uh, watch uh, the race uh, every year. And uh, most of them I do it from the coach in front of the TV. Uh, but sometimes I also watch it live along the track. So why is uh, Vasalop uh, important? Ah, it's a long history behind uh, that race. And uh, now they have raced it for several years. And uh, um, actually, me and Camilla, uh, we have our first date on uh, Vasalop's day. <laughs> and uh, many of my friends and also uh, members of my family have done the race. So I have locked the doors and leave this apartment. Let's go. Our new apartment. <laughs> we are so happy. It's so nice. Let me show you. Oh, balcony. <laughs> it's now three months until we should uh, go to Spain and start our hike. I start to feel some, uh, what should I say, inspiration and excitement. Uh, even if I have been there several times, uh, it's still snow here in Sweden, so it's. Uh, not the perfect weather to hike in Sweden yet. So I, I walk on roads that are, what do you say in English? Shoveled? <laughs> I don't know. They have fixed it, so I can walk there, but uh, yeah, I'm not so good training. I'm not so, I have not walked so much yet. Yeah, so I feel I need to find my shoes <laughs> i have not found them unless i have not uh, bought any shoes yet and uh, yeah it's something that is over me <laughs> you can say <laughs> but this time i want to talk about something that's not so often is uh, on the topic when you uh, talking about the Camino de Santiago and that is how to 
handle your mind during the walk. I think many of you already understand that uh, when you're walking, even if you are very fit and well prepared, you will be tested in certain ways. And uh, maybe it's not going to be in the way you think or have prepared for. But um, what I want to say is that it, maybe you cannot prepare yourself for everything that will happen. But I think it's important to understand that it will happen. <laughs> Some of you will have a really nice walk from the day one to the last day, but some of some of you won't are going to struggle a bit for some days because our own mind not always do as we wish. <laughs> I have to fight a bit against myself. I'm bored. And uh, I don't know if you like what you see. I think it's just an empty feeling. <laughs> and uh, I want to arrive at the hostel now but I have still four to five minutes to walk I think not so fun I think I will try to find a spot where I can sit down and talk we can talk about it can you hear this The ice is singing. So I found myself a spot here. I think it's uh, okay with the noise from the city and uh, the surroundings. Uh, I know I have these uh, glasses that change in color, but I hope anyway it will work out for you. Um, I want to talk about something that uh, often is uh, forgotten when you're planning for your Camino. And it's something that uh, I think can make a big difference to having a good Camino. And that's how you deal with your setbacks and things uh, that uh, don't go as a plan. So let's talk about how to manage your thoughts. The first thing I want to talk about is the reason why you choose to hike. You have decided to walk the Camino for some reason. Maybe because you want an adventure or want to meet other like-minded people or want to prove something to yourself and others or want to live everyday life for a while. Maybe your reason is religious, or you need time to reflect and make choices, or you have some other reason. Regardless of why you choose to hike, you have made your own choice, and you have your own reason for it. So I want to remind you that that reason is good enough. You do your own Camino. Remember that during a hike. Let us take an example. You want to prepare for things and are therefore looking for information in various forums. Maybe you read that to do the hike in the right way, you must walk in a certain way. Otherwise, it's not a Camino or you are not the pilgrim. Already in this moment, it's good to trust in yourself and that the way you have chosen to hike is good enough. When you then set off and arrive at the trail, you will meet other hikers. You are probably excited and full of expectation to start the hike. And maybe at the hostel you will talk with other hikers about your various experience from life and previous hikes. 
Maybe you meet someone who has trained a lot or someone who has walked several Caminos and suddenly you feel that, oops, I'm not prepared at all for this. Or, oops, I haven't packed correctly at all, and so on. Again, you have to change your mind settings and remind yourself why you started your hike. And remind yourself that it was that idea that uh, got you going in the first place. Take me for an example. I am probably of a seeking nature, and when the Camino de Santiago came in my way, it fit into my nature. I saw it as an opportunity to meet myself and learn more about myself. Then when I walked the part of Camino de Santiago for the first time, I learned that uh, there was uh, something called the end of the world, and I also got to learn some of the history about Apostle St. James. What made the difference for me? from being a one-time adventure to really impact my life, was the meeting with a French woman and a German man, who told me that it all starts in Le Puyin Valley in France. I often have an idea of uh, doing things in the right way. Yeah, so I start looking for information about the real Camino de Santiago. I learned about the historical part, about the Bishop Goldschalt, who walked in, in year 950 from Lupuin Valley to Santiago. He was one of the first non-Spanish speaking person. I could also read that this uh, road was called Via Podensis and was over 1600 km long. And they said that the pilgrimage began in Lupuy and Valley. To make a long story short, I didn't know anything at all about how things work when uh, hiking in France, or even which way to go when I start my hike. But uh, that was not something that stopped me. I went to Le Puyin Valley in April 2017 and started to walk toward the end of the world. I was determined to walk all the way and to achieve the things that I have dreamed of for a very long time. Quite naive, I think, afterwards. But maybe that's what uh, got me going. Another reason for walking was that I wanted to walk in a way so that I learned more about myself and I wanted to meet myself. Maybe it sounds strange, but I needed to learn more about myself so I could forgive and let go of things that had uh, happened in my life a long time ago. And I also needed to understand that I was good enough. You can say I needed a kind of revenge. I also had an idea to complete the walk in a way that people had done long before me. And I wanted to walk the real Camino. I didn't uh, know then that your Camino can start wherever you want. I learned that during my walk. I also learned that there are many roads to Santiago de Compostela. And that I probably mostly walked on roads that did not exist at year 950. I also had better equipment and access to food and shelter than the pilgrims of that time. So was my Camino then wasted? No, not at all. My Camino completely blew me away. And luckily I didn't know then that I should be tested in so many different ways during my hike. Both physically and mentally. Just take the fact that there were no pilgrims mass that day when I started in Lupuy, because it was Easter, but they held a blessing for pilgrims. But unfortunately, they didn't open the usual gates in the cathedral when we should start walking afterwards. So I went out of the cathedral and thought I followed the right path, and went about 25 kilometers in the wrong direction my first day of my hike. But thanks to knowing why I walked and how I wanted to complete my hike and that my Camilla reminded me about it when I needed it, my trip ended up to be amazing. I also visited the tourist office and then I found out that all GR tracks, the Grand Randonnées, are marked in red and white, but that they have different numbers. I had followed GR70 and not GR65 as I should. 
After we visit the tourist office, I went back to my hotel for dinner. But before that, I called my Camilla at home. I told her about my mistake and asked her not to tell anyone because I was so mentally broken. I told her I was ready to go home. After listening to my babbling, she said calmly to me, It's not a transport you will do. It's a journey. Those words changed my mindset things. I had 66 days and 3 rest days in my bag. I had been afraid of going in the wrong direction and losing time so that I could not reach Santiago in time. All this happened on the first day. It was as if the Camino wanted to tell me something, but I did not listen. So the Camino had to stop me, and that would not be the only time during my hike that would happen. But the Camino would also give me a lot in return. The fact that I then ended up here on YouTube is a result of that journey. And maybe it was meant to me to spread my journey to others. Who knows? I don't know really where I, where I have my mind <laughs> today. Uh, I'm feeling strange. <laughs> I'm not tired at all. But uh, I maybe feel a little bored. Ah, maybe I am bored of my own company. The second thing I want to mention is when you encounter mentally road choices and setbacks on your way to Santiago de Compostela then it's good to remind yourself of the reason for your walk. I know I repeat myself several times, but I think this question gets very important. When you get to the start of your hike, you're probably deeply motivated, a little excited that this journey is finally about to begin. And now you are going to hike. You set off Thorva de Gaulle, and that's when it's good to know that you will be tested in several different ways during your hike and that your state of mind can determine how the outcome from your hike will be. Maybe already on the first day you meet what many call their Camino family with whom they will then walk all the way to Santiago de Compostela. Maybe already after a few kilometers it starts to rub a little on your feet and if you hike with others and they might set off with long strides and you end up a little behind then it's good to keep track of the conversation you have with yourself internally. You may start thinking, how can they be so strong? Is it just me who is in bad shape? Why are my shoes starting to chafe already? How am I going to cope with this? And so on. Now it's time to you to change your mindset and remind yourself why you choose to hike. We humans like to belong to a group, and belonging to a group can make you do things you hadn't planned for. For example, you can start pushing yourself more than you can handle at the time. If your new or old hiking buddies don't have the time or inclination to wait for you because you have to stop and fix your shoes or take a break because you need to rest, let them move on. If you want to meet them again, exchange phone number with them, or decide about the place where you can meet them again. Then do the things you have to do to feel good. Let's take another situation that you can end up in. You have walked under the sun for a whole day and afterward you enjoy the dinner and fall asleep comfortable in your bed. When you then wake up the next day, it's pouring rain outside and you have to go out to walk. You gather your things and get out into the rain and start walking. But soon your legs are cold and your shoes are getting wet. You start to think dark thoughts about how to get your shoes dry for the next day and where to stay overnight. Are you going to walk in this weather the whole day? Again, 
you have to change your mindset things and remind yourself why you are hiking. For example, instead of telling yourself, oh, I have to walk in six hours in this rainy weather, you can divide the day in stages. For example, you can say, I will hike to I can get the coffee or I hike to the next village. Or you can tell yourself, my stomach is full and I feel good right now in this moment. Change the time frame. I got a friend. He want my he want me to see him. <laughs> Everything does not always go as you plan. I can tell you that. The next thing I want to mention is that just like in your everyday life at home, you will have to deal with things that come in your way. It can be different situations you will end up in, and it can be mentally, physically, or just basic things. Then, try to be positive and act on things that you can do something about, and accept things you can't do anything about. Remember to be kind to yourself and your body. It's always like this. When I start to feel that I am at the goal for today, goal for the day, I let my feelings come out and now I feel tired. <laughs> yeah. Ask yourself, is this something you can do something about? Is this something you should act on? Is this something you should act on right now? Is this your responsibility? Or is it someone else's responsibility? Finally, here are five pieces of advice from me to you. One, pay attention to how you talk to yourself internally. Try to change thoughts from any negative condescending thoughts to positive ones. Give yourself happy thoughts. 2. When the day gets long, try to change your perception of time. Change your thoughts to, for example, now I'm going to walk until I can have a coffee. Divide the days into steps. 3. The time frame to reach your goal can be stressful. Avoid pushing yourself to go further than your body can handle. Here's an example of that. I did my hike from Le Puyin Valley to the end of the world in 52 days. Camino Frances have I walked in 25 days. But still, when I was going to walk Camino Norte and had 28 days for the whole journey, I had to end my hike after 16 days, as I made wrong decisions and stressed my way through the hike. I was confident and made several bad decisions. I hurt my feet because I didn't listen to my body's signals. I never experienced the vibe I wanted to and I left people behind that I really wanted to meet again and spend more time with. My mind was mostly set on the goal of completing the hike and reaching Santiago. It didn't help that I walked over 50k one day. I had forgotten the purpose of why I walked. 4. Sometimes you will be tested during the walk, in a way you were not prepared for. Everything from dealing with loneliness to something that you maybe think about from situations in your life. Then try to reflect for a short while. Give yourself a time frame for your thoughts, so you don't dwell in something that tests you for a long time. If you're there to talk about it, do it with someone who is willing to listen. Or talk out loud to yourself. If the thoughts are troublesome, maybe you can do like this. Aha, there is that thought again. I'm aware of that thought. Yeah. I can think about it, but I will not act on it. And then it will pass. And there the thoughts go. And then change focus. Hello. Oh, I'm walking the Camino. Ah, I know you know. <laughs> you have... 
I'm walking here and thinking about stuff that comes up to my mind when I walk. I walked now for soon a week. This is my seventh day. And uh, I start thinking about the Camino. The Camino is like uh, life itself. You don't escape the life due to by walking a Camino. It's uh, almost the same. Sometimes someone step on your bed too or your mind goes back to situations that you are not so comfortable with. It's group dynamics persons and the experience you have had in life. I experienced that yesterday and I felt how, how things come up into me that I don't want to have that. But then the Camino also gives in form of other things or persons that suddenly appears in your life or in the situation you are in and helps you to go through it. It's like the Camino want to show me that I can handle things, that I have had uh, no problem, uh, that I think it's bad for my future. No, for my bad from my past. I think I have to leave things behind. It happens to me already in school. I'm old enough for that now, don't you think? <laughs> okay, let's walk the Camino. There's still a few days left <laughs> or weeks, I hope. 5. Be kind to yourself. Walking a Camino can be like life itself. You may want to belong to something, maybe a group or to be seen. And maybe you feel left out in some situations or that you don't fit in with what you meet along the way. Then remember why you are walking and that it's okay to tell others that I want to walk by myself for a while or to tell yourself that I am okay as I am. Ask yourself, is this what I'm looking for? Is this what I want with my Camino? I hope you will take the part of this conversation that you like and leave the rest. And I hope you will have a fantastic journey when it's time for you to do your own Camino. For a long time I had negative thoughts about my walk along the Camino North and I felt that uh, all do the walk was beautiful, I never got to experience what I was looking for. Sure, I had moments when everything was wonderful, but something has been nagging in my senses for a long time. I have felt a desire for revenge, but still I have not been interested to returning. But now, after making this video, and now that I have forgiven myself and my thoughts, the interest in returning has increased. Many people ask if I intended to walk the Via de la Plata or other routes around the world. And it's possible that I will. But I have never encountered what I encountered along the Camino Francis. I appreciated Via Podensis and Camino Portuguese. But the Camino Francis is constantly on my mind. The feeling I get when I walk that trail has never appeared on any other trail. For me. I don't know why, but it's something special, so I return and walk part of that trail time and time again.
Buen camino, peregrino. Let your journey be pleasant. And ultrea, as you say. Adiós,